On the tip of my finger right now, there's a drop of water. A seemingly simple thing that we interact with every day, yet which I realized contains many things that we don't understand at all. In today's video, we are going to answer just how much life is hiding in a single drop of water. Welcome to Unmolding Science. It's me. First, let's find out what a typical drop of water looks like. So, we'll start with some setup. We can see that a drop of water contains stuff, specifically these tiny diatoms, little photosynthetic algae. And based on this 1978 paper, the average number of cells per milliliter of seawater is round to million. So, that means in that drop of water on my finger, there are between 1 and 10,000 cells. Okay, that's an interesting start. But what about animals? We know that marine environments contain more animals than plants, at least by biomass. And if we check in with our friends on Wikipedia, we can see that zooplankton are the go-to source of animal biomass in the ocean. Let's say that we want to know about copepods, one of the dominant types of zooplankton. Again, we can look at an older paper from 1988 to get an idea of their abundance in surface waters. They found that copepods were abundant in the Gulf Stream, often exceeding 1,000 individuals per cubic meter of water. That means that there are somewhere between 0 and 10 copepods in my drop of water, okay? But that was off the coast of Bermuda. What about closer to shore? Well, it turns out that those pesky sewage plants that we discussed last week actually do us a favor here because they provide us with the perfect nearby sample. According to some sampling done in 2018, just one liter of the water leaving the sewage plant contained over 100,000 copepods. Assuming that one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, that would mean there are between 1 and 100 copepods in my drop of water. So, it seems that far from the clean ocean water I had imagined, wastewater contains a great deal of life. But I wasn't done yet. There is still a lot of life that we hadn't accounted for. Maybe most importantly, bacteria. If we ask the question how many bacteria are in a drop of water, it turns out that we'll have to ask another question first. See, the answer depends on where you're looking. To figure this out, let's visit a website that I've been meaning to show you before. It's called microbiologies.com. Here, you can explore tons of microbiology data, including this plot that shows you how microbial abundance varies across different environmental samples. Let's zoom into the marine category. As you can see, there's quite a range. Surface waters tend to be less concentrated than deeper waters. But to get a ballpark estimate, let's pick a value right in the middle. We'll use this value of 1 million bacteria per milliliter of water. That would mean there are between 1 and 100,000 bacteria in my drop of water. And finally, there's one more group we need to consider, archaea. Archaea are similar to bacteria, also single-cell microorganisms. However, they're distinct enough that we classify them in their own domain of life. As with bacteria, the number of archaea in a given environment varies widely depending on where you look. But using this same plot again, we can find a rough average. The range is between 0.001 and 0.1 million archaea per milliliter. That means there are between 0 and 1,000 archaea in my drop of water. Putting it all together, we can see that in this one drop of water, there are between 10 and 100,000 organisms, excluding viruses and other hypothetical microbes. So, how surprising is this? Well, it's hard to say because nobody has counted the microbes in a single drop of water before, at least not that I could find. And so, we can't compare our estimates to any predictions. But hold on, I hear you cry. You said we'd be looking at a drop of water from the very beginning. But the water you've shown us is from the ocean and the sewage plant. Which one is it? In truth, it's neither. You see, since we started, we've used several assumptions. For instance, we assumed that a drop of water looked something like this. 
Well, turns out that's not true. Tap water tends to be less concentrated than seawater. And while we picked a typical value from the literature, we really should try to measure the concentration of cells in our own drop of water. First step, let's get a visual. Now, we can animate the difference between the prior beliefs and our new data. Next, let's calculate the total cell concentration in our drop of water. Turns out it's higher than we thought. Between 20 and 200,000 cells per drop. But we're not done yet. We use several key assumptions along the way. For instance, we assumed that the number of cells per drop would be similar regardless of where we sampled from. But that might not be true. To test this, let's compare two different samples from the same source. We'll take a sample from the tap and one from the sink. .hem. It seems like there are more cells in the sink sample. Now let's compare to different sources. We'll take a sample from the tap and one from the shower head. This time the shower head sample has fewer cells. Okay, so it seems like the number of cells per drop varies. But does it vary by too much? Well, let's check by comparing the 95% confidence intervals. Do they overlap? Yes, they do. That means that we can't reject the possibility that the number of cells per drop is similar across sources. In other words, we can't say that our initial assumption was wrong. Finally, we need to consider whether the number of cells per drop varies over time. After all, our initial sample was taken almost a week ago, HMM. It looks like the number of cells has increased since then. But again, do we have evidence to reject the hypothesis that it hasn't? Let's check the confidence intervals. They overlap. So again, we can't say that our initial assumption was wrong. In conclusion, while we started with a rough estimate of 1 to 10,000 cells in a drop of water, we now know that the number is closer to 20 to 200,000. But maybe more importantly, we learned that the number can vary significantly depending on where and when you sample. What's next? Well, you might wonder how many bacteria are in your body. Check out this video. And to get a better sense of the data behind this video, check out the link below. Thanks for watching.